Hello, hello. Welcome on into another episode of the Whiskey Crusaders. I'm Will. And I'm Matt. On today's episode, we're talking about Passport Scotch, a blended Scotch whiskey. Don't you forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Click that notification bell. Matt, tell me more about this particular blended Scotch. Well, I have a handle version of this. This was actually also requested in the comments. I'm sorry, roll your name, but I know this was requested in the comments uh, the other day that they want to know if we could review Passport Scotch. Now, usually it's this rectangular cool bottle, which I'm sure you guys have all seen. Um, but like I said, it's got to handle it. So it's not bad. It's like $25 for a handle. I think sometimes it's cheap as 20 So no, it's it's also a nice budget scotch. Uh, it's 40%. It was created in 1965. It's an experimental whiskey, as I say, of course, the 60s was the time of experimentation. Uh, it's its base is the Glen Keith Distiller, which was built in 1957 to help out Sarthila, which, of course, is the head, which is where shivers have been made since 1986. But needed more malt capacity, so they built Clinky, which is near, which is pretty much north, you know, just really close nearby. Unfortunately, in 1999, Glen Keith was closed and then reopened in 2013. So we haven't reviewed Glen Keith yet, but we will get on that one for you guys soon. So, like I said, this was a very different animal than most guys at the time. It was a unique rectangular green bottle. It was created by Master Blunders, Alan Bally, and Jimmy Lang, of course, of the Chevy Brothers fame, who created Royal Salute, Hunter Pipers, and some uh, very nice, fine things over there. Uh, well, then an interesting thing to say is he actually started in 1952 at Robert Brown, which at the time was owned by Seagram's and at the time. Another major component, of course, is so this is Sarthila, which is owned by Chivas, obviously. Then they all opened up a couple others. So it was Altavane in 73, Rising Eleven in 75. So those were then added to the blend in the 70s. All of it's done in American uh, oak. They say it's mostly made of highland malts and lowland grains. So there's a higher proportion of malts in this than grains, which is definitely a positive. Uh, they say there's a huge replica bottle at the Glen Keith Distillery for the Glen Keith Passport Experience. You can go there, see, which was opened in 1995. They said this brand was really for the export market. to travel around the world mainly for, like I said, export. They said in 76, it came to America for the first time called the Lucky Americans Campaign. In 78, Seagram's then went ahead and bought the Glen Livet Distillery, which includes Glen Livet, Glen Grant, Lawnmower, and Ben Rieck. So then those were added to the Passport blend. And then Shivas bought some other brands. Abelauer, Glen Eloquite, Edredauer. This is considered the most famous single malts in all blended scotches going to this bottle. Of all the major ones, this has the most of the famous ones. That's kind of cool that that's what they're known as. Uh, so it was introduced in 1994 to South Korea as the first major scotch to be available widely on the market. So in South Korea, it was just shocking that it wasn't until 84 that scotch was available there for as a regular thing, which I thought was really interesting. Then in, in uh, 2001, it was sold to Bernard Ricard. As we know, Seagram's didn't quite do so well at that point. They sold all of their things off. So unfortunately for Seagram's. Uh, like I said, um, it also is the second most selling scotch in Brazil. Does very well in Portugal, Poland, Spain, Mexico, and India. And Gola sold 100,000 cases uh, starting in 2007 and still to this day. So it does very well. Launched in Russia in 2011. It's considered one of the 18 local brands of the Par Ricard portfolio. As of 2015, it sells 1.7 million cases per year. So they sell a lot of this freaking scotch. So let's see. Like I said, this is another budget one. Uh, for like 175 is like $25. So let's see what we uh, let's see what we have. Yeah. So I, I do love all that the fact that there's so many great single malts in this whiskey. So yeah. super excited that I love all those distilleries. So we haven't probably reviewed half of them, but I am a big fan. So let's see and get into this wild thing. Well, this does smell more malt forward. This is yeah. much more citrus, much more uh, peaches and pears. Yeah, pineapple, uh, like those little pineapple candies, lemon, lime. Yes, pineapple, lemon, lime, and then like uh, almost like a, a grapefruit candy. Yeah, nice citrus in there. Uh, a little green apple, some orange, oh, vanilla, honey. Yeah, everything's a tart citrus or a, a tart oh. berry. Everything's tart, though. Yeah. A little bit of chestnuts are in there. A little bit of chocolate. Oh, now the so new good. American That's... oak is starting to show up. It's, I mean, it yeah. feels like a used barrel, but you're starting to finally find those uh, vanillas and cinnamon tones. Yeah, a little hazelnut. Even that if it's some like coffee tones. Very nice. Yeah, coffee grounds. Yeah. I like it. That's really, that smells quite nice. I'm not picking up the mushroom fungal. I'm not picking up yeah. any heat. I have not, nothing, at least on the nose, no. And none of that Campbelltown funkiness that I that I. No, and yeah, based on these, yeah, these are all pretty much Highlands and Space Side. So, yeah, I don't think we're gonna get really anything that's gonna have anything like that. Yeah, all right, let's see how it, it smells takes. clean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
Mm, nice. Not bad either. Yeah. Same pineapple candy is that very first note on your palate as well. Yeah, lots of that lemon lime. A little bit of grassiness in there. Vanilla honey. Caramel. There is a, I think there's a little bit of peat, though, on the palate, though, which is kind of nice. I was finding that as well. It's just a wisp. It's not a whole lot. Yeah, it's lot. a tiny amount. That's nice. Wow, um, I'm picking up a lot of malt whiskey in that. Yeah, orange, um, honeydew melons now. Um, I'm pecan. definitely much more into my peaches and cream, vanilla, mm. uh, I mean, uh, yeah. oatmeal notes. Uh, oh, you know, dot candies. <laughs> yeah, confectionery sugars. Um, that's, yeah, there's a lot of malt in that. That's really nice. I really like that, actually. A $25 handle? Yeah, what a deal. Who knew? Passport whiskey. I, mean, I knew my grandpa always had a mini ball of it in his bar. I mean, it's probably from the 70s. It's still got a tax stamp on it. I never knew it was actually good. I just figured it was kind of a cheesy, you know, bottom shot. No, that's not bad at all. I drank this. I mean, damn. Thanks for – I'm so sorry. I don't remember your name. I should have gone back and looked at the comments. But if you request this, please let us know in the comments, though. But uh, thanks for requesting this. Yeah, like I said, happy to interview anything you guys want us to. Just I'm let enjoying us this as much as I remember enjoying Doers and Shivas. Actually, might like this better to be honest with you. But then, like, I, I was really enjoying uh, one of the two. I can't remember if it was Doers or Chivas. I think it was Doers. Just the, their normal white label was just yeah. Really yeah. The Chivas is a twelve. I think probably. It's oh right, and the price, price point on that one's so high. Yeah. Well, I mean, now it'd be interesting to do a live stream on budget scotches that are actually good. Whereas, oh, God, because I don't want to do another one of those bottom shelf budget uh, ones that we did. Nothing like what we did with Pete where we, he tried to kill us. No, yeah. I'm good. That stuff was awful. That was the worst of the worst. These, have, This has been quite pleasant. i got no problem with this at all. i rather enjoy that. Yeah. So, yeah, another it one. It doesn't feel like they went way far into the heads or tails. It doesn't no. feel like it's... Um, yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm guessing this is probably like five or six be my guess i don't think it's i think it's definitely more than three the way it tastes it See, and i feel like there's probably some five and six grain or some five and six um malt oh, yeah but i can i can see that there could be some three-year-old grain in there yeah i think that's probably most likely exactly that yeah it doesn't sound i didn't see anywhere how old it was and that's not really a surprise but that'd be my guess it you're probably, feels, probably it's an older malt younger grain it feels well put together it feels yeah. well blended yeah, I mean, like, you know, Jimmy Lang made this. I mean, he was going to do a good job. Yeah. He's not going to put his name on it. It's going to be crap. So, I mean, you know, he did, he did a really good job. I got no complaints. Um, yeah, I picked this one up, too. I mean, if you just want to say anything, another good budget scotch to have around, and people aren't going to be in front of it, saying fine for cocktails. I mean, yeah, it's I mean, nice. fine for uh Fine for a decanter bottle. Yeah, absolutely. And like I said, yeah. can't beat the price. So, yeah. And it's cool. And if you get the other, get the rectangular one, it's even cooler. I just this just this what that was available around here is the uh, the one seven five. So that's what yeah, we that's get. That's what I've seen. So, all right. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Click that notification bell. Come hang out with us live on Monday nights when we deep dive into a whiskey topic. Help us out financially. Join the Patreon page. Get access to some behind the scenes fun. And until next time, keep on crusading. Put a whiskey in your glass. Cheers. Let us drop a glass. Hmm. Thankfully, you've never done that for all the shit. Thankfully, you've never done that for all the shit. Thousand plus episodes. Thank God that's never happened. Never happened. That was let's, the closest time, though. Let's let's keep it that way. <laughs> I love all the distillers that are in this. So this should be good. Whoa, that's a crazy kitties. <laughs> all right let's attack on the killer cats let's go back to i love all the distilleries that are in this